This is no bullshit gaming podcast, two and a half gamers. Sharing actionable insights, dropping knowledge from our day-to-day user acquisition, game design, and ad monetization jobs. We are definitely not discussing the latest industry news, but having so much fun. Let's not forget this is a 4 a.m. conference discussion vibe, so let's not take it too seriously. All right, go, Mathieu, go. Welcome, everybody. This is No Bullshit Gaming Podcast, and oh, you, you heard that already from Samuel. Uh, so, this is session number 68. <laughs> Today, we are talking about Flood Rush. So, uh, there's like some session number mix up because we are re- recording this very close to each other uh, and very close to the, the one that we did with Nightcrowds and Soft Launching in the US. So, you know, I know you most probably don't know what I'm talking about, but you will see in the next episode. <laughs> we, see, we switched the numbers because we decided to do. And guess what? It's our podcast, so we can do whatever fact we want. So anyway, my name is Matthias Lancherich. You're a consultant, consultant for 10 years. So, soft Line and Global 35 Games. Thanks. I'm Felix Brauberg. I'm an ad monetization consultant. I've heard, helped clients earn over $100 million in ad revenue. Mm, and I'm Jakub Remia, your product game design consultant. You, <laughs> yeah, your hosts, amazing. You know, you see, easy, easy. So, what are we talking about today? Uh, another <laughs> new week, new <laughs> soft launch game by Supercell called Flood Rush. So, uh, yeah, basically it's a squad busters, but kind of worse and uh, without the super cell IP. <laughs> yeah, I heard characters. the term bootleg squad busters from some <laughs> videos. I mean, uh, it's not worse, actually. I, I thought it, it's worse, but uh, it's a matter of opinion, obviously. It feels very not super cellish, honestly. I, if... It has its advantages and disadvantages, I would yes. say. We'll go into detail. Yes, but the thing is, um, if I didn't know this is a game from Supercell, I wouldn't say this is Supercell. So, I mean... Nothing says this is Supercell, and it doesn't definitely look like it's, it's from Supercell. So let's see. But honestly, it, it's a very early, early prototype. So uh, so that's the first thing. I thought it's actually not as great as Squad Busters, but then I actually kind of... I'm pretty good at this game. Well, I know you, you can't believe that, but I actually won multiple, <laughs> multiple times. So it's already way better. Are you playing on computer? No. Yes, because oh. you know that's the problem. How to install the, this game again? So VPN, and you need to have Android twelve. Uh, but thanks to the fact that I'm actually still in the US in Santa Barbara, I don't even need to use the VPN. So I just had to switch uh, from my uh, Google Slovakian account to my US clients accounts that I use, uh, and there you go. But man, Android! Oh my God, how I hate Android! I found out now that it really sucks. I mean, the game plays... Remo. You're going to trigger Remo, man. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> so, I mean, how can anyone play this game? I mean, the... oh, okay. So I, I will take that back. The game plays fine on Android device. But last time when, when we talked about the Squad Busters, I was playing on my iPhone, streaming it to my MacBook. It was perfect. No glitch, nothing. It was working well. Now I tried to stream the fucking Android uh, tablet... F- to my MacBook, it's like it's just choppy, it's slow, terrible, terrible, terrible Easy. experience. Just don't buy a shitty tablet. Well, this is this. Well, okay. So this is a tablet that uh, you know I bought to <laughs> for my daughter to actually play See? the kids' See, games. You're complaining about you know you being cheap, not. <laughs> well, well, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Jakub, tell me uh, what kind of phone you have and. Uh, where did you play this game? <laughs> you fucking idiot. I have, I have an old phone. So I have act. an old phone. He couldn't even play the game on his phone. He need to bor- he just had to borrow his wife's phone because he's fucking cheap. And okay, now, okay, he's okay. To- now he's telling okay, let's, me... Let's, like get back, buy- let's get back to the game. Let's get back to the game. Okay, okay, okay. Back. <laughs> so, you know, listeners, so you know, like, this is Jakub. This is exactly... Now I'm buying Jakub. a new phone this year, man. I just, like... Need I'm to buying a new phone. Oh, can we talk about the game? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, well, you can talk about the game. You you complained last time when that it was really boring. So tell me, tell me Which what's one? the game about? 
<laughs> yeah, okay, okay, let's start. Um, no, 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 Felix, 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 ah, Felix should okay. start. Yeah, 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 Felix should start. He's very, oh, you know, it was so boring, I almost f- fell asleep no, that twice. that was a recording, that was a recording. Oh, <laughs> oh recording the recording like of you oh, guys. Really? Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, uh, the, the game was launched, or well, soft launched in English-speaking countries, mostly, and then uh, like US, UK, Canada, New Zealand, Singapore. And I found out very interesting things uh, when I was installing the game. So I actually saw an ad on Google Play for Floodrush. So this means a few things. Uh, this is not closed beta. Accord, uh, when I've, I'm not sure like why I thought this is actually closed beta because then I opened up the, the Floodrush website and it says like fucking biggest headline ever, open beta. <laughs> Never mind. So this game is... Uh, is searchable and you can run uh, a UA on open beta. You can't do it on closed beta builds. That's like uh, set in the guidelines. So, like so they're few... running UA on it. Yes, it, it seems. It seems because this was like the first uh, first thing that popped up into my face was the ad for uh, for Flow the Rush, which is uh, on Google because it's Google Play, right? So they're using Google ads for um, for UA for uh, at least like early UA, and this brought me to like few speculations. They're most probably as confident as with Squadbusters because, you know, they're driving traffic to uh, to this game with paid, which is obviously... Because there's no Supercell IP in it. Exactly, exactly. So, and this is open. So, uh, you know, open beta, everybody not closed. Can play it. Yep. So everybody can play that. Uh, and uh, yeah, also this game is definitely developed by a different cell uh, than Squadbusters. And cell meaning different team within the... Uh, within the it's Supercell, open. yes. So, few I can maybe start with feedback, or you can you can actually you can go Jakub, and then we can talk about the feedback and everything. And also at okay. the end, let's let's also do the same thing that we did with Squad Busters. The scoring, yeah. Well, the scoring, that. yeah. Okay, so yeah, for those that uh, are not watching the video stream that we are having on YouTube. The game is very, very similar to Squad Buster, actually. So we can say it has that battle royale kind of essence in it, where you are essence. plays in an island where there's multiple players. It's again PvP driven. Uh, genre, I would say, something between like battle royale uh, and uh, what's there? Like army something i don't know i, I would say it's just like uh, army something like what, what kind of genre is army something yeah i'm thinking because the <laughs> thing is that again we have this entity mechanic meaning that we don't have like one hero to control but we have just the hero is pretty much like the flag bearer here he just controls the man it's terrible of the I, ha- I hate it he, the hero can't do anything besides the there is obviously the uh what is the special ability, special ability there, yeah. But that's we'll it. get there. We'll get there. We'll okay. get there. Uh, yeah, again. So it's battle royale with again like army entity hero. That the army is pretty much automatic. You don't control them. You just kind of move them somewhere, and they follow your hero. If they get too too stretch out from the hero, they suddenly speed up and like catch up. So, so that, what we need to say is that this is tapping instead of controlling. Uh, instead of thumbstick. Yeah, that that's a very 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 big difference, and my guess is that it's like very very deciding factor in the fun part of the game. Whereas the control scheme determines the smoothness of the gameplay, even the overall feel of it. But you know, you, you know what I don't get because I play it on the tablet, and if I play it on the phone, I couldn't, and I played with two two hands actually, so I, I can't just use it as one hand. It's a portrait mode. It's and very I don't, tricky. I don't, yeah, it's, I don't get it. Compared to Squadbusters, it's very tricky because yeah. there you have one thumb for the thumbstick and the other thumb for casting abilities. Here, you have you are playing it similar to Clash Royale, pretty much. Like it's much more closer regarding control scheme to Clash Royale, where you need to manually select cards that you are summoning into your army. Then again, with that same finger, you're clicking on spells or abilities, yeah. and also you're clicking on the area where your character needs to move, and you picking stuff from chests, and that you need to do just with one finger. So, yeah. so I have yeah, I have my tablet on on the table, and then just display it with one hand. 
Yeah, and compared to squat busters, where there's a dedicated thumbstick for movement, and then the other finger which uses the abilities, I would say this is probably a worse option because in Clash Royale it works great because the map and everything it's kind of much more structured here. Some of the mechanics kind of overlap, which means that you get the mess. Like I'll get to it, but yeah. Okay, by the way, I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing the game right now, and I'm gonna show this recording uh, afterwards. So, yeah, we'll see. You know I, how how good I am. <laughs> of course, you're gonna cut out only the battles that you win. We know. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's gonna be one sounds one like recording. Magic. One oh, sounds like sounds like mate. Okay. Anyway, let, let's continue. Uh, the good thing here is that it's much more PvP driven because there's the sinking mechanic, and. This is, I think, one of the biggest problems that currently Squadbusters suffer from, where you're not really that motivated to do PvP there. You're actually getting pretty punished there because Squadbusters works on that gem rush premise where you need to hold as much gems as, as you can at the end of the game, whereas fighting other players doesn't really reward you that much. Where here, in the Flood Rush game, there's that like circle-based island that gets... Like sink, pretty much sinking into the ocean, which and you is have the usual battle royale. True mechanic battle, that, battle royale, yeah. Yeah, it's true battle royale, meaning that if you are in the water, your health is getting down; it can even kill you. So this is literally true battle royale, where the map gets smaller, 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 and squishes you into the middle, where you are pretty much forced to fight other players. There's no way around it, and the mobs even kind of run oh, against yeah. the units themselves. Like I mean, your army and their army. Jesus so Christ. the PvP aspect and why you want to like battle people is much more, let's say, relevant here. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is that if you kill someone, they actually drop a shit ton of stuff that you want to use because they drop a lot of these taika bubbles which is the energy like yeah. it's think of it as as the clash royale elixir that you, you use to power up your army so you summon cards thanks to that and killing a player which you already destroyed probably his army because yeah in, in order to being able to kill a player you first need to destroy his army because you need to clear the targets as you cannot control your army and which target they choose they just which randomly sucks, choose. by the way yeah we, which sucks hard because you cannot like just snipe the hero and like no you well, can't i mean in that, in that uh, case it's good because then of course like everybody would just go directly for a hero and here now you need to destroy the whole army and then you can kill the hero yeah, because but there's no, no targets left. But still, if that hero walks into another army, he, he he escapes and you are then forced to fight another player. Yeah, exactly. So I just I just uh, finished second and uh, killed three other people. So it's not bad. <laughs> way, yeah. way better than the last. <laughs> yeah, but, but again, like the PvP thing is, I would say, much more smooth here like i mean the incentive the mechanics and like rewarding like i i really enjoy killing other people and like oh, of course them. you do it, it's great and 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 the, the other really good <laughs> thing great. is that here they solve perfectly the problem that you know who is stronger or or exactly yeah because of you. the yeah because of the number because of the numbers their, yeah because every player has a number above their head that but uh, tells how much units in their unit cost they have summoned but. So you immediately see that like l l there's like level 38 on the left side of the screen and level 10 on the left side of the screen. And I'm level, I don't know, 30, 32 or 31, whatever. So let yes. me just eat that other player and get his power and his like energy, whatever. And then I can get stronger and return Ooh. to that other player. I just so, found three Ceratops. Fuck off. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. They have a pretty, pretty nice lineup of units there. Anyway, this is this is really important to do because this gives you that strategic choice of like, am I going to find this guy or I'm not going to find this guy? But and this... he knows even without seeing him, it's off screen. So you see it on the edge of the screen. Whereas in Squad Busters, you don't know, especially when people merge units. Yeah, and also the the number of, or like, well, number of, of the head of the hero or the seeker in, in this game you know, it can be tricky because if you have loads of these like uh, low end units, it doesn't it doesn't mean that much, that much because if you then attack with the shark bear or whatever, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's just yeah, it's, it's not rock, as... paper, rock paper scissors mechanic, the usual one. You can counter other units that are pretty much like countering the other units or whatever. Like this unit is good against the swarm of units. This again is yeah. like single unit, whatever. But at least you have like a good hang on. Like if this guy is kind of strong or not, yeah, because true, you know. There's the number. And then you see that what he has summoned. 
Uh, the other thing is that you have those cars mechanics. Like as I said, it's very very similar to Clash Royale. It's pretty much the signature thing that uh, um, Supercell come up with. So you have this kind of energy that you spend what? on cards that you can switch during the game, and then uh, you summon them based on your choice, and they fight for you. So it's some kind of a, let's say, yeah. As I said, like the genre is Clash Royale mixed with Battle Royale. I would say that that's the closest one uh, as as for the genre, because it's very very similar. You even have the spells here on a separate dedicated slot, so you can have three units uh, or four units. I think yeah, four units in your three units, three units, three units only. Okay, one sorry. spell, and then you have the the hero spell or the hero ability, basically. Yeah, yeah. So three units, hero ability, and a spell, and both the units and the spell are found in chess during the gameplay. So they are similar to something like, let's say, gear you found out in PUBG or any other Battle Royale game when you spawn on the map. So you try to salvage whatever you can find during the first, you know, first parts of the you arriving at the game. So I didn't die. really get the mechanic the of, of like cards being bronze, silver, and gold, which like have different, let's say, levels of units but then you still level the units in the menus like i mean like in progression so it's kind of yes uh, he confusing a little bit but uh yeah you can find like various qualities of these units but they are still affected by the level you level them up in the you know in your deck and progression so that that's an interesting the biggest problem i have with this is that it gets very very messy during battles because i love that the, oh, man i love no, that it's amazing I, I hate that man like th this is the worst part because, yeah, because you don't know how to play games no, you don't know how to play it <laughs> just, just listen to me the, the thing is that you engage with someone and let's say we are the last two players on the battlefield yeah. so we have both kind of powerful armies uh, like the one that we see here. Mm -hmm. So what happens that if we slowly eating through our units, they spawn the, the Taika bubbles, the energy, and your pretty much what you need to do with your hero, you need to walk over them to yeah. summon other units. Mm. But what happens if this encounter happens on an open chest or an open whatever card something, you misclick. And you misclick, you click on the card and it asks you to replace it with some yeah, of okay, the cards that sure. you have, okay. which mm. blocks blocks you from actually spawning units casting spells or doing any anything else which is super super clunky like this for me is like one of the biggest problems here that it can get very very messy if you are fighting in some kind of like wrong position and you misclick and it feels super frustrating yeah okay that's true that's true it happened to me and and, and, and my guess is that they will solve this but they just didn't figure out the good idea how to switch cards when you find different cards on the on the map because you definitely want to have this ability to switch, like, let's say, uh, there's a yeah, shark bear. I want to have shark bears. They're awesome. I don't want to have this shitty, whatever, pistol fish. And <laughs> pistol you want to fish. switch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. They have yeah, no, no, like, no, no, I know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Pistol fish. There. Like, for me, like, to be honest, like, the ultimate tactic is just go with octo shots and either shark bears or the the tanks the shelly shelly ones yeah the shelly ones they, yeah those are pretty don't pretty summon good. anything else just the octo shots in the back and the shark bears or whatever like tanks in the in the front and then you destroy everything that, that, that's it basically you have these like rocketeers as well it's kind of okay ish too like the other thing that i they found interesting was just a stun ape so there's uh, like monkeys that can stun and has like bigger range which is great but other than that like yeah, I don't know if man, you know what's really OP the the net uh, spell. That's like when that's the net to tie people down. Uh, net, yeah, yeah. Yes. Net, net, net's the best spell actually. That's oh, yeah, net. like that's perfect. Uh, because this is other thing. You need to aim again during the battle, and there's yes. a big delay between the spell being shot and you. Oh yeah, that's it. true. That there's a pretty big delay, and again, it gets very, very clunky because you're trying to target with your finger over people that are you fighting currently. And so, you, I'm yeah. Too bad you can't see it. This is uh, I'm the there's like two players left, which is me and this like literally like guy with 16 versus me 120 of 24, which is going to die quite quickly. Okay, so now I'm first. So so for me, like this is this is currently the biggest problem of the game, like the control scheme and its interaction with the gameplay, especially during fights. There's definitely stuff that can be ironed out. Like I mean, either automate it or like put in somehow on a separate control scheme or Oof. like a different button setup. I don't know, but 
it can be definitely better. Like I know Super can do it. Or you can just not have the fat finger. <laughs> It's, okay, get a pen. Get a pen. Get one of those click pen. pens. Yeah. The, uh, it's no, not, but, not the fast thing but like, why is this? Why would this not be the the part of the the design? I mean, it's a it's what kind of like part a, of design? it's a random factor. So if you misclick, it's frustrating. But then you need to focus more, and then you know, like every but game is different. Have games. Supercell have... would never allow that. Like no, no, no. Supercell they, don't such want to have games with frustrating feelings, man. One one thing is like randomness. The mean? other thing is frustration. <laughs> Those are very different two things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the thing is that my guess is that somebody had the great idea of like, let's combine the Skullbusters game with Clash Royale kind of card drawing, whatever. And my guess is that somebody in the team just need to get out of the box of that scheme that this is pretty much Clash Royale kind of base that we see there and just think of. Oh, out of the box, like how to solve this problem to not be kind of constrained by the crash royale thinking. Like we are having these cards that are being powered by Elixir and stuff like that. I know they can figure out that they will definitely figure it out. I no problems asked. Well, that's why this is just like uh, early in yeah, soft launch. Exactly, and and they'll get tons of feedback on this. I'm I'm pretty sure. But uh, for me, like. The PvP ness actually of the game is feels better than Squad oh, yeah, Busters. Oh yeah, oh man, hundred percent. It's like the PvP in Squad Busters isn't really that exciting as here. Like here, because you don't need to do it. Forced, it's just yeah, it's, you're yeah, forced yeah. into it. Like yeah, exactly. It's a side so, side thing. Here you need to survive. You need to be yeah, the the first. Basically. The 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 other thing that's that's really interesting is that again. They are using their new tactic, which I saw at Squad Busters, that you cannot select your deck. Yeah. This this is this is very interesting because keep, keep with me a little bit. Uh usually all the supercell games that you had before, like starting from Clash Royale, then even Rush Wars and like uh, Squad Buster, uh, no, sorry, Brawl Stars. Y- you would select that one card from the Gacha that you have that they are pretty much upgrading, and the deck would determine not only your like, current army but also kind of your spending depth. But both Squad Busters and Flood Rush are working on this principle of you unlock more and more cards, but it means that you can then encounter them in gameplay. You're not choosing anything, meaning that it's forcing you to upgrade all of them. Because if you're not upgrading all of them, if you get one of those like not leveled ones, you're screwed. So that's a very, very nice mechanic, I would say. Because again, you're forced to upgrade everything, which everybody oh, wants within a gacha mechanic. But the other other thing is that uh yeah, it can get very, very hazy where you just you just cannot like learn, learn one deck, you need to learn all of them. Because there's you know, nobody can guarantee you that you will get those cards during gameplay, like the starting cards or whatever. Yeah. Like I just I, mean, I just always you... run the Octo Shot tactic, uh, but sometimes I just don't get in as the first card and never get in the gameplay. That's it. I and always now... have always have uh, the fish pistol fish octo shot and then some other like two weird different. Uh... But but how many cards have you unlocked? Uh one sec. So I have uh, which eight, is your level? Eight cards. Five. Well, what's your level? Five. Five. Okay, mine six. So there's like three more cards there. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see. There's one more. Looks like a crap. And then yeah. there's the three setups. Yeah. Guys, why, why, why do we think Supercell is doing these two games at the same time that are quite similar? Yeah, that that's the other thing. That uh, <laughs> my theory is that only one game can survive. Like so this they're doing a battle royale PvP against, between against the, the game teams at the same the time as they're designing these games. It, it's like, uh, uh, by the way, that's internal tactic of Tencent, <laughs> which they are owned by. <laughs> as of you know. But uh, for for me, this seems like an inevitable thing that will happen because the games are so similar that I I can see only one being in like portfolio of one company. Why would you have like those very two similar games on the market? Those are similar, but I mean they are similar, but honestly, like quite different anyway. I mean, mm, are they? Uh, yes. Well, you I... just said it. It's uh it's the, you know it's a PVP. Mo- like would they take players PvP. from each other? You think if they both yes. like global launch? Oh yeah, yeah okay, right. I, I would yeah, think yeah. so. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So well, but then of of course like the the squad busters would take also players from uh, brawl star brawl stars. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like yeah. come on. But isn't that like with every new game within the same category you you That's develop true. you are going to cannibalize your previous games. 
not if you're called Playrix. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, but how can you how can you say like how yeah, can you compare match three games? It's totally different. Yeah. It works differently. Yeah. yeah. Not if you Playrix. <laughs> yeah, but 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 the thing is that. Uh, yeah, it will take players from Brawl Stars. It will take players from like Clash Royale and like these other games. So yeah, it, it's it's gonna be a risky move anyway. But my guess is only one game can survive in the end. There won't be, or they probably don't want to like launch two of these. That's the same so what stage of testing do you think Supercell has done on both of these games before kind of getting to the stage? So so this one's pretty early, I would yeah. say. Yeah, at least by Supercell standards, the Squad Busters definitely like after. Like I guess multitudes of iterations. But this is already like second closed beta. This is the f- this is the first time we see this. Yeah, yeah, it's second closed beta. But uh, keep in mind that like the world did know about the game from what like January. Yeah, Squad Busters. I mean, so so remember, Brawl Stars was in like soft launch for one and a half year, where it was they nearly killed it and then did some very very drastic changes to it. But my guess is that now Supercell just operates a little bit mm-hmm. different in a way that like they have much bigger company and they probably have multitudes of these prototypes. I think Ilka mentioned five in those articles, in, in his usual like uh, year, annual yearly blog. blog post, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that they have five. So, don't know. But you never know, like, Supercell kills them so fast like they can afford it, so well, we'll see. But honestly, um, there are like a few interesting things that I kind of found out during playing the game. So mm-hmm. like on the adventure map, which is obviously not uh, a saga map, a saga map. it's uh, it's a reward track. It's a reward track, yeah. So it's basically like a battle pass, but different uh, visual style, I would say. Mm-hmm. There are these different buildings, like uh, well, buildings, like islands, and uh, there's this. Uh, you can explore these islands, which I didn't know. It's and just mechanic. It's just mechanic, yeah. But it's like, come on, if you don't don't pay attention, like I didn't see like any types of um, tutorial about. What guy can yeah. find in the end? You can the miss adventure. those. That's probably yeah. because it's too early, right? No, I was like, okay, so what is this? Like, this is a magnifying <laughs> glass. Okay, well, what can I do here? And then I was like, oh, well, there are like multiple chests. Like, come on, give, <laughs> give it to me. And you have these like exploring me- mechanics as well. So it's like you're going for exploration and then it takes like, well, like 12 hours to actually uh, just get a that chest. Timer. Yeah. That's it. I mean, of course. but it, it's, it's exactly the same as. Uh... How is it called? Uh, the eh. Eh? Uh, I have no idea what M means. Squadbusters, sorry, <laughs> Squadbusters, which is uh, this kind of very very streamlined scripted reward track. Keep in mind that you have some chess directly on the let's say the main track, not the side tracks, where you can literally select the card that you want to get yeah, cards from from two. So it's so, so it's usual. not even like the, the usual gacha thing. It's it's like you can a little bit let's say it's semi-random it's not that random on top of it you have sometimes the the chest that can be like cooldown based that you need to have like four six twelve hours whatever yeah. and you need to progressively get to those so you need to first start with four hours six hours ten twelve hour one and then you have chests only for gems yeah so, so this is really interesting because there's no second track there's no battle pass, no nothing. Yet. You just sometimes have chests directly purchasable only for hard currency gems. And there's no way to... My guess is that you, if I keep like getting those, uh, eventually I run out of gems and then where's the like resource deficiency hits and I need to pay money to get those. Otherwise yeah. I cannot get those. So I don't know, maybe they're trying some kind of new battle pass tactic here in a way that like, it's not really a battle pass. It's some kind of a whatever. Yeah, it doesn't even look like a battle pass. It's more close to something like, uh, what was the seriously puzzle game? Best Fiend map Best with Fiend. this kind of a parallax mm, that you yeah, can okay. like, look into the distance. And you can even scroll through it. There's just like yeah. a very small segment that you can see back and forth and, and that's it. And if you miss those things, like, you can even return back. So... Yeah. Well, you can return back. What are you talking about? No, you can't. You can't. I well, can't I'm... return back to, to, where? To, the, to the segment that I was before, like to the beginning. Oh, well, uh, in here, in, in Fodrash? Mm-hmm. Well, I just scrolled back to the like the uh, almost very beginning and then found all these uh, side chests there. Because you had those there. I, I opened all those. Maybe that's why. Ah, I that's why. Yeah, that's why. Because, yeah, I didn't see them. But then also like the the level of well you have the ship which is the the level you have you are on level six I just yeah 
uh, progressed to level six as well. And uh, the ship level also is tied to the level of uh, seekers and your crew and your items. Items meaning spells, basically. This is, again, very similar to Clash yeah. Royale, where your level is tied to the HP of your towers and their strength. That that's pretty much translates one to one. Uh, the hero, by the way, only the the speed hero seems relevant to me. The one that summons the monster and the one that does the wild wind or whatever whirlpool thing seems kind of underwhelming compared to the to the girl that just has like attack speed boost for all your army. Yes, it, yeah, yeah. So overpowered I... compared to those two. It so. is. I but I played a lot of the uh, with the, the mighty hammer, whatever. And it's mm -hmm. not bad, but yeah. Right now, I kind of uh, by mistake selected the, the girl with yeah. the haste, and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> this is the way girl, better. <laughs> the girl with the haste is just much better because sometimes you use it to to destroy someone because you want to boost your army. Sometimes you or, use it to chase to chase someone to just be like faster yeah, or just stuff. flee. <laughs> oh yeah, or just flee like multiple <laughs> uses. Whereas the one with the hammer, we just does the like. Uh, area you know pool damage yeah and, and even to time it properly like you select it and then like it's executed like two yeah. seconds after and, and yeah, the exactly. army is gone it's gone exactly i know uh so. what can you do i mean it's yeah. a part of the yeah but the gameplay the, the progression mechanic or let's say the energy mechanic that they have there is very very similar to brawl stars so you have this kind of a refilling energy that you can get when you win battles and eventually it runs out meaning that you can still play as per usual supercell standards because it's a pvp game so you can still play but you just don't get rewards and you need to wait to get those rewards or refresh them with like hard also there is the hands. there is the chest that is tied to the number of kills yeah, you, that, you that, do that's that's the equivalent of their star chest that they have in Clash Royale. But, ah, okay. You know, this is this is some kind of let's say consolidation price that eventually, even if you're not really that you know winning that oh, much, yeah, okay. you get still you chest. can progress. Yeah, you can progress. Yeah, yeah, from just killing people or like getting player kills on the map. So yeah, when, it's, you, it's you, like, when you don't kill people, then you're basically fucked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know it, it's it's easy, but because the good thing about Battle Royale, it's like if you get killed early, uh, you just start another game. Yeah, you, don't, you really need to be in the game. You know, that's, yeah. that's, that's why it works that good. Um, yeah, was there? There's daily, weekly quests currently. Uh, nothing else to the progression that much. Only three heroes. Uh, they have I think 15 units already uh, yeah. in the game. Yeah, so, pretty much. Yeah, pretty nice lineup. I think it's uh, like okay for the beta. It's like what eight okay days. Okay for, for the beta. I mean, it looks like it's a kill. Yeah, it's beta for ten more, days. It's, yeah, it's pretty good. What? Yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah, good. Like yeah, you, you you can't even unlock all of those. So yeah, that, exactly. Uh, but they're there at least. You so you know yeah, what yeah. you can expect. And, and then there's this kind of mode icon that's I guess similar to Squad Busters, which just have the like Jam Rush main one, not the modes one where the like gameplay altering modes. They have just like you know the survival thing that runs as an event. So my guess is they, if this would go through, they would have like different modes and like you would do something with it. Leverage the power of loyalty-driven UA with Mistplay. Users discover a collection of curated games to play based on their interests. The more they play, the more units they earn. The more they spend on in-app purchases, they also earn. Units can be redeemed for their preferred rewards, including a variety of gift cards. Tapping into our exclusive and growing community of engaged gamers at a global scale. Loyalty works for any game and genre. Uh, for me, like again, similar to Squad Busters, I would love to see some kind of social feature, like, you know, party up with <laughs> just friends. Just wait for or... it, yeah, just wait for it. Yeah, so, but again, we'll come. We'll come. Yeah, th this is not really that point of the beta, but yeah, for me, uh, as I said, controls, uh, squad busters versus slot rush are much better squad busters. Man, but the, PvP -wise, the camera that is changing the angle, I mean, it's just terrible. Yeah, it's, it's, it can be even a little bit dizzy for people, actually. Yeah. But, Very uh, but there's no way around it, you know, like the, the map and everything is structured like that. If if you're going around in circles and, you know, you just can't see stuff from that angle. So, yeah, I understand that why they did that, but yeah. I, I don't. But, I mean, yeah, I know uh, you, you but, can't see the, the angle, but it's like, it, I don't know. Yeah, uh, what would you want to see? Like you want to see like a tree blocking your view? You don't want to see that, man. Okay, true. Yeah, it, it's just by the design, maybe like, a little uh, bit smoother. Uh, yeah, it, but they can iron it out. I don't. I don't think there's. Oh a yeah. Problem. As I said, the biggest problem are 
Squadbusters, the PvP element is lacking and controls are great. And here the controls are lacking and the PvP element is great, I would say. Those are kind of two, oh, yeah. two, two big like things that these games are competing against. Uh, for me, the progression is also better here, to be honest, a little bit, because you have that tried and tested kind of Clash Realm model a little bit more close to it. Whereas in Squadbusters, you have those like world tied heroes and then the like random heroes it's kind of very similar but mm. still like i kind of get like a better feeling from like the progression here i don't know it seems kind of more smooth to me don't know why but yeah maybe but yeah, i was i was really much used for a clash royale model yeah i was really disappointed from from the start as i always get with uh, playing in any game honestly but then i was playing the game a little bit longer and it, this feels a little bit better than squad busters in terms of mm. like gameplay yeah, like it has its own mistakes, but of course, yes, of course. The, but keep the, in mind, without a doubt, Squadbusters is already kind of far ahead of it. In yes, terms exactly. Of the yeah, this, this definitely feels like a very early prototype, and also like I was when I mentioned um, uh, non supercell ish type of graphics and everything. I first thought it's actually a disadvantage, but then I was thinking about how this can actually get pretty good CPIs because this type of graphics, which is not really that polished, uh, brings me back to any, like, I mean, it's very far-fetched, uh, like low-poly things uh, that mm -hmm. hyper-casual games had. That worked quite well. So, I mean, the, also this angle uh, and these, like, millions of, like, chaotic battles that happens on that happen on the on, on the map, that can work quite well in, in, in creatives even. Yeah, that, like Survivor IO style creatives. Yeah, but that, that's the big question. Like, if Supercells only you know relies on organic, would this would get any organic? No, no, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> but then, yes, uh, I mean that needs to change when you don't use the the Supercell IP. That's the yeah. thing, because it's as you know, they used the UA already in this like open beta stage, which I yeah, think but... when you have the IP, you don't need that much. Keep in mind that IP also has its disadvantages. It's not only like it draws some kind of people to it, but it also kind of repels some people out of it. So sometimes, like uh, more, let's say, general IP can have a big, bigger total addressable market. True. So, yes, like, of course. Super That's IP. true. So I, I don't think so. They're gonna like do that same thing all over again. But well, it's you know, it has some limits for sure. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, I think this. Uh, this looks good. Uh, Felix, yeah. what, do you th what do you think? I honestly like the artwork more on Flood Rush. Like, I think it looks better than Squad Busters, but that's just subjective, right? Like, I really like it. Yeah, it's kind of fresh, let's say. Yeah. It's very fresh. Pretty, also, it's prettier. It's prettier. Yeah. <laughs> also, the thing is, because I, I, I talk to a lot of people in the industry, and this, like, whole island slash... Uh, water team or whatever it's kind of it kind of works well in terms of the overall cpis uh because i've heard from different gaming companies that when they tested this uh type of uh, theme or well visual style against different teams for example you have travel town merge game and some other mm -hmm. games that use this that this visual style definitely like won against uh, other styles in terms of the cpis and marketability so isn't this like that? Uh, what's like Pixar movie called Moana or what? What yeah. is this? Yeah, that, that's, that's what it reminds style. me of. But yeah, yeah. does Supercell really care about CPIs? Yeah, that's my question. Like, yeah, they we, don't, even, right? Do they even but care about the at UA? some point you have to care? I mean, you can't I, just. I've rely been saying on this the... about ads for their games for <laughs> years. <laughs> they don't care about Felix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the rewarded ad placements in this game. <laughs> <laughs> There are to, none. Yeah, there are none. There's not even shop. <laughs> so be just done. come on. There's not even shop. Yeah. Uh, but oh, uh, look. Survival. Okay, so there's the, like, have you seen that there's the new event coming in four hours? Uh, which, which will be is, the same event. Which is, will be the same. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Nice. So are we going uh, ratings? Yes. Should I start? Because uh, I have ad monetization rating here. Yeah. <laughs> Zero. Yeah. <laughs> zero for effort, Man, zero for wait, implementation. Wait, 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 wait. Just think, because obviously like this is very early, so how can you even like uh, 
great the ad monetization here there is not even a shop so how can like why would they even add ad monetization in this stage there won't be any ad monetization there won't be any ad monetization that's why i'm giving it zero, like zero yeah. there won't be let's, ad- let's, let's cut the crap and continue there's not going to be any ad <laughs> there's not going to be any ads in here like <laughs> like okay. none <laughs> but what if <laughs> do usually you, you do soft launches but with do you see the, ad- the potential see how it works and see basically Man, how it fits in move over it fine anyway what's the rating <laughs> Zero. Oh my god. From ad no, monetization. No, no, no. Game design wise, and then how potentially uh, is the probability of launching this? Of launching, yeah. That, that, yeah. yeah Product wise and, and, and launching wise. That was the two ratings. Yes. And player experience. So you have zero player experience because you didn't play. <laughs> because there so, are no ads. <laughs> yeah, because there are no ads. Okay, fine. So let's, yeah, just yeah, just uh, rate it from the player perspective, and you can you can rate it from the like chance of like being global launched, actually. Yeah. No. Three. Think. Think. Three. Three for what? What do you mean three for what? Uh, like your rating. Three. Three out of ten. Yeah. yeah. Three out of ten. Okay. Okay. Uh, mine think. regarding uh, design, I would say, or let's say player, I would say seven because they can still like they definitely can do better on the controls and like the whole thing. Like they can do it. I I yeah. know that they can do it. So seven currently, but my guess is that the next next beta we'll see will have definitely eight or nine. And then yeah. launching it, uh, yeah, I'm thinking maybe maybe there's going to be a surprise and maybe they're going to kill Spotbusters and just launch this. So? So nine out of ten. Ooh, nice. Okay. Because this is, Maybe this it was is... too hard on the Flood Rush. Maybe I want to change my score, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to well, four. But honestly, too like... Too late, they haven't man. launched again for very long, but yeah, let's see. No, I'm just I'm just like kind of going this this like completely <laughs> contrarian view here that they're gonna kill squadbusters and do this. But for me, it's just like the earlier prototype has bigger potential than the much more yeah, polished exactly. game in squadbusters. That, that's what that's, I, that's, that's what I wanted saying. to say as well. So I said uh, squadbusters um, chance for for global launch like seven out of ten. I think here is like eight out of ten or eight point five for sure, because these early prototype and it already looks way better no not way bigger better possibility but... for optimization exactly exactly thing. exactly yeah like the like the baseline is definitely better i think yeah so yeah. and in terms of player experience uh i think even now i for me i like it i almost you know uh wanted to quit the squad buster after 10 minutes but then when i got into it it was pretty good as well and this is i was like from the day from the like minute one i was like ah it's actually kind of fun. It's it good. has I, that I, battle royale feeling. That exactly. Yeah, I hate, Honestly, I hate the fact that you get stronger. you get grouped in together with the water. It's really I clever hate, mechanic. I it's hate, really cool. Uh, oh, but I that's hate the camera battle royale mechanic. You know, like nothing to it, to be honest. Yeah. So I think player experience like already eight for sure, at least for me. Yeah. It's kind of the controls are just just they need to get better. So but what was look, your rating? Eight and uh, eight seven? and eight and eight. I don't know. Okay. Two eights. And also, like, look, so what happened to Brawl Stars? Like, they completely changed the, the whole thing, like, during the soft launch. Yeah, they went portrait instead of landscape. So, I'm, yeah. Um, why why would they not do it here as well? Yeah, so... they can do it. They, they, they definitely can do it. If they see the potential, and they will see the potential because of the numbers, I guess. So, yeah. Also, yeah, there, you know, there is, I guess, like, what we discussed before uh, recording, like, the higher probability for gacha here with the chests. Yeah. So already, like the monetization potential, might be might be better here. Yeah, it fits the gameplay more, just in a way that how it is. Pretty much. Yeah, but you never know. Like if uh, if there is like a big movement uh, at Supercell to go outside of or like uh, away from Gacha, then you know, <laughs> even even if you, if you, there is a big potential, then you might not see anything. Uh, kind of my messages though. Maybe try ads, you know, tier three geos <laughs> at least. Come on, they can't afford your IAPs because you don't, you know, change them by geo. So you know, man, ads try, for the people. Make it democratic. Make it. Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah, man. Like, uh, I would, I would. All right, like I'm going to go hug a tree or something. I don't know. <laughs> I would like to say there is a, a bigger potential for ads here, uh, but I have no idea. Uh, they I just don't, do I just don't they want to give you false. Uh, False Thomas. hopes. False hopes. Yes. Yeah, back to the river. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, I think that was it. We're yeah. really looking forward to what will happen with this in the next iteration, or if there will be even next iteration. Let's see. We'll keep a close out eye on that. Man, I hope so. Man, oof. Don't, don't, yeah. Don't, you never know. Ba don't take this on, away from me. Come on, man. <laughs> based on the current, current, you know, current weeks, we're going to see a next Supercell game next week. So, oh, yeah, of <laughs> course. Know, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, 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 exactly. That's, that's how it, that's how it works apparently <laughs> now. Uh, but okay. So, I think, uh, yeah, that's it uh, for today. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much for listening. Please subscribe. Um, and then share the the podcast with your industry friends, colleagues, uh, and cats. dogs and cats as well. Mm -hmm. Cats love it. Uh, definitely more than uh, than di different podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> that's yeah, looking at you. <laughs> looking, <laughs> at you. <laughs> looking at you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, Thank you very much. See you, guys. Right. Bye -bye. see you next week. Bye bye. Bye. Not it's the, like, like one sentence. One sentence. Not even one sentence, just like Matthias Andre, <laughs> Felix Barber, Jakub Revier. That's it. <laughs> why? Know what we do. By the way, why don't but we? You, let's your your fucking your intro, like the longest intro I've ever heard. Yeah. Talk about ramble on sentences. Eight yeah, paragraphs like, the... later. So did yeah. I write enough in my essay about myself? Yeah, you wrote yeah, too exactly. much. Dude, come yeah, up with an just... elevator pitch. Hi, I'm Jako Remiar, game designer. I've worked on X Games. Boom. Yes. <laughs> there you okay. go. And okay. then we launched it, and then we went dinner, and we had a yeah. great time having dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and we served steak and salad. Exactly. Oh, and you know, like when uh, when I was born fucking 40 years ago, oh, I already had this uh, in my mind. When I was I a wee child, I a dreamed game about designing designer. games. <laughs> And then one day I grew strong yeah. and I learned swordmanship and then I designed games. Yeah. <laughs> Thank long you for listening short. to my what? presentation yeah. about myself. Uh, <laughs> you bad? Okay, but let's look to a reasonable idea.